Hello dear students this is Dr Shabana Begum associate professor in the department of zoology Maharani Science College for Women Bangalore presenting a talk on the topic metamerism which is actually a sub topic under unit 1 that is animal architecture pertaining to BSc zoology first semester paper 1 in my previous lecture i had discussed about the sub topic body coelom or the body cavity its definition and types such as acelom pseudo coelom and true coelom then some points on the coelomic fluid and their functions then the types based on the development of coelom such as schizocoelom and enterocoelom along with the significance of having a body cavity or a coelom hope you all have understood the same today i am going to talk on the sub topic metamerism its definition and types pseudo metamerism and true metamerism the learning objectives are to define and study different types of metamerism such as pseudo metamerism and true metamerism and to understand the evolution of metamerism in animals here in this particular slide if you keenly observe the schematic diagrams of metamerism and its types is given so you can just see here the topic as such the word metamerism is divided into two types mainly homonomous and heteronomous they are also called as complete and incomplete metamerism then under homonomous metamerism again two more blocks are seen which are the true metamerism and the pseudo metamerism which we will be drilling in detail little later so coming back to the introduction of the topic the word metamerism is a greek term meaning here meta means after and mer is part so metamerism is the condition when the general segmentation of bilateral animals involves longitudinal division of the body into linear series of similar sections it's also known as metameric segmentation and each section is called metamer or somite or segment and each of these segments has repeats of some or all units of organs so you can always repeat the serial segmentation of the body along an anterior posterior axis is called metamerism the, then this term is used only when the organs of mesodermal origin are so arranged so the primary segmental divisions are body wall musculature and coelom this in turn imposes a corresponding metamerism on the associated systems longitudinal structures like the gut main blood vessels and nerves extend through entire length of the body while structures like gonads are repeated in all or only few segments metamerism is encountered for the first time in annelids apart from this it is also found in phylum arthropoda and vertebrata or chordata one group of mollusca belonging to the class monoplacophora also exhibits metamerism tapeworms show pseudo metamerism or strobilization which is not true metameric now let us discuss about the types of metamerism here the metamerism can be external and internal so you can say external and internal metamerism in case in most of the annelids metamerism is conspicuously visible both externally and internally example 
the earthworm that is Ferritima posthuma which has numerous body segments and the complete body being repeated segmentally. Moreover, even the coelom is segmentally divided into compartments by intersegmental transverse mesenteries called septa. Only the digestive tract escapes this metamerism process and it extends through every segment. In arthropods, metamerism is chiefly external. Humans and other vertebrates show internal metamerism of nerves, blood vessels, etc. Next, let us discuss on the complete and incomplete metamerism. So, complete type of metamerism practically affects all the body systems. In this type, the metamers are homonomous and each metamer has segmental blood vessels, nerves, coelomodus and nephridia. Thus, this condition is also called homonomous metamerism. In fact, it is also known as complete metamerism. While metamerism in arthropods and other higher animals is incomplete because of division of labor. Consequently, metamers of different regions of body vary considerably. Such a condition is called heteronomous metamerism or incomplete metamerism. The larval and embryonic stages of arthropods and other vertebrates show complete metamerism with uniform metamers, but these metamers become unclear in the adults succeeding specialization. What is meant by true and pseudo metamerism? So, I have just mentioned the homonomous metamerism or metametry is simple and very similar segments are produced in worms and related animals. It is further grouped into true metamerism and pseudo metamerism. True segments in allids are developed during the embryonic stages whereas the pseudo segments present in tapeworms are superficial which are formed in the adult as a result of budding called strobilization. The proglottids of tapeworms are not true segments but rather they are complete reproductive individuals. Here in this table, some of the differences between true metamerism and pseudo metamerism is presented. You please read this. Here, I, in the true metamerism, such conditions like number of segments is constant for each species. New segments are added in front of the last segment called pygidium. Hence, posterior segments are younger ones. While in case of pseudo metamerism, number of segments is not constant as new segments are constantly added throughout the life. During growth, new segments are added in front in the neck region that is proliferative region and hence the posterior most body segment is the oldest one. In case of true metamerism, simple elongation of the pre-existing segments results in growth. While in case of pseudo metamerism, addition of new segments from proliferation region of the neck results in the growth. In case of true metamerism, here all the segments are of the same age and at same stage of development, where, whereas in case of pseudo metamerism, proglottids vary from one segment or uh, one another in age and degree of development. All the segments are integrated and interdependent functionally. They work in coordination and preserve the individuality of the body. This individuality of the body helps in locomotion in case of true metamerism. The example is analyst. So analysts will show true metamerism. While in case of pseudo metamerism, the proclotids or the segments are independent and self-contained units as each of them have full set of sex organs excretory and nervous systems. Each proglottid is productive unit developed for detachment. For example, such conditions are seen in K.
case of cestodes like tapeworm. So next, origin and evolution of metamerism. You can say there are various hypotheses which have been proposed for the origin of metamerism but none of them are acceptable in the absence of convincing evidence. The main theories are pseudo-metamerism theory, the first one. This theory was proposed by Hyman and Goodrich in the year 1951. It explains pseudo-metamerism that occurs in cestodes such as tapeworms and according to this theory, metamerism initially developed secondarily as a result of repetition of body parts like blood vessels, coelom, nerves, etc. Later, a segmented condition arose by the formation of cross partitions between them so that each segment receives a part of each system. This process of formation of cross partitions after basic segmentation is also seen in modern day annelids during development of somites in larval and adult stages. According to pseudo-metamerism theory, it is believed that pseudo-segmentation or false segmentation is an adaptation for an undulatory movement. The next type of theory is called fission theory and this theory was proposed by Perrier in the year 1882. It postulates that pseudo-metamerism evolved in flatworms by annulation or strobilization of body. So strobilization is mainly aimed to increase the rate of reproduction. Proglottids of helminths are serially arranged segments but in reverse order and they increase reproductive capacity in many times. This theory proposes that metameric segmentation resulted when some non-segmented ancestors divided repeatedly by transverse fission or asexual budding to produce chain of sub-individuals. Such process occurs even in modern day annelids and platyhelminthus animals. Later, these sub-individuals integrated morphologically and physiologically into one complex individual. Thus, according to this theory, a segmented animal is a chain of completely coordinated sub-individuals. The third theory is called cyclomerism theory proposed by Sedgwick in the year 1884. According to this theory, metamerism in chordates evolved for better arrangement of organs in coelom. This theory assumes that coelom originated in some ancestral radiate actinozoan coelenterates through the separation of four gastric pouches from the central digestive cavity. Initial division of two pouches resulted in three pairs of coelomic cavities, namely protoseal, mesoseal and metaseal in ancestral coelomates. Later, loss of protoseal and mesoseal led to unsegmented coelomates like mollus. Then the subdivision of metaseal produced primary segments leading to the development of segmented annelids. This provided septile compartments in coelom in which organs could be arranged in a better way. The phylogenic assumption of this theory is that all bilateral metazoans were originally segmented and coelomate and those acelomate unsegmented groups like flatworms lost these characters later. Next theory is the locomotory theory. This theory is proposed by Clark in the year 1964. It postulates that metamerism evolved in annelids as an adaptation to locomotion of different kinds. It evolved independently in chordates for locomotion which was 
previously carried out by lateral endulation of body in primitive aquatic vertebrates. Annelid metamerism probably evolved for burrowing. So metamerism allowed myotomes or muscle bundles and nerves to be arranged segmentally for better coordination of undulatory movement of the body. So you can always say there are two more types of segmentation that is mesodermal beginning in the mesoderm and proceeding outwards uh, example being the annelids, arthropods and chordates show this mesodermal type of segmentation while superficial segmentation begins externally from the circular surface then proceeds inwards often involving only the body wall musculature for example acanthocephala show superficial segmentation or metamerism. The kind of segmentation encountered in tapeworm is mesodelma but differs from true segmentation as seen in annelids. In annelids and arthropods, new segments are formed at the posterior end while in tapeworm, the neck is the zone of proliferation. And one more point you should remember, it is believed that metamerism has evolved twice in the animal kingdom. First is annelid arthropods. In analysis as an adaptation for burrowing second time it evolved in the chordates in chordates as an adaptation for undulatory swimming movement finally the significance of metamerism how metamerism helps the body of the organism so it has provided effective locomotory mechanism as the coordinated contraction along body generates efficient body undulating movement in an inching pattern. So here in case of annelids itself when you take into consideration the circular muscles helps to elongate the segments one by one and the longitudinal muscles work to constrict or shorten the segments hence showing slow inching movement or pattern. The fluid filled coelomic compartments provide hydrostatic skeletons for burrowing. Accurate movements can take place by differential turgor pressures affected by flow of coelomic fluid from one part of the body to the other. Different segments can be specialized for different functions leading to the development of high grade of organization. It is not clear marked in annelids but well developed in arthropods. The example being the spermatheca clitellum are involved with reproduction thus regional specification of the body with proper division of labor is exhibited. So what is the outcome of the study? So at the end of this lesson in a nutshell to say we have studied that the metamerism is the reputation of homologous body segments. This type of development can be seen in annelids which are earthworms, leeches, tube worms and their relatives. It is also seen in some more advanced forms in the arthropods, crustaceans, insects and their relatives. Of course, the crustaceans and insects also come under the arthropoda. So true segments in annelids are developed during the embryonic stages whereas the pseudo segments present in tapeworms are superficial which are formed in the adult as a result of budding called strobilization. The metamerism has led to a great diversity of annelids, arthropods and other segmented animals in the world. The simple segmented condition of annelids allows them to exist in every environment from the deepest parts of the ocean to the soil of some of the highest mountains. With this, I will conclude my talk and I want you to answer few of the multiple choice questions to know whether you have understood 
the lesson or not the first question being metamerically segmented body is present in options are earthworm nereis leech all the above so the answer is answer d that is option d all the above so these earthworm nereis leech etc are the metamerically segmented organisms the second question metamerism or metameric segmentation is characteristic feature of porifera mollusca annelida platyhelminth swarms the answer is option c that is annelida third question how many number of segments are present in leeches so the answer options are 32 33 34 and 45 so the option c is the correct answer so the body of leeches has 34 segments in them next question an animal with metameric segmentation or metamerism is here options are house fly earthworm roundworm planaria so the answer is option b that is the earthworm one more question metameric segmentation is the characteristic of options are platyhelminthes and arthropoda echidonata and annelida annelida and arthropoda and d is mollusca and chordata the answer is option c that is annelida and arthropoda one more question annelids and arthropods are similar in that they both have our options are reduced coelom an open circulatory system external segmentation d is septa between segments so the answer is both have external segmentation so the option c is the correct answer so at the end of this mcqs i have placed some of the references here in the slide you just go through these references if you get any doubts thank you